This conference will now be recorded. So now we're going to go over the chapter eight homework covering prepositions and a me. So we'll start off with some parsing. And after that, we will do some translations. I don't think we're going to do every one in this, but we're probably going to do several of them. All right. Uh, Gregory, you want to do this one? Yeah, I'll do it. All right, go ahead. Um, dative, singular, fem feminine, from Hemera, meaning be like two day with day or in day yeah exactly so this is hey Mara, and there's a question if it should be a long a because it's uh generally iota only subscripts below a long a but um like you said dative how do you know it's dative what's the kind of calling card of dative dative singular that is the iota subscript Yep. And like you said, we use to enter with to translate the dative and Hemera means day. Ezekiel there. I'm here. Okay. You can do this one. Get a little bit closer to the mic. It's a little bit hard to hear you. Singular feminine. Okay. Lexical form Shalata. Yep. And um lexical form no inflected meaning late. Yep. Um yeah, I don't really have anything else to add on that one. All right. Uh, somebody from Woodbury. Let's have you uh, do this. Uh, Quentin, did yeah. you say we had chapter eight homework? We this don't have a clue what you're talking about. We're just doing it in, doing it together. The reason is, is we're going to get to something uh, in a minute where I don't want you to have prepared. That's the whole point. Thank you very much. Well, we're not, we don't have a clue what you're talking about. So we're, there's three of us here in Woodbury and we're clueless right now at the moment. So. Well, can anybody, parse this? that's all I'm wanting. Dad, why don't you give it a try? Is it for robolitis? Close enough. So case. Can you hear me? Dad, can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? For a moment, I lost my screen. I don't know what went wrong. Okay. All right. So, what is the case? Can you see it? Sorry, I guess that it's important to be able to see it. You're going to have to help me. Okay. 
So whenever you look at this work, what's the first thing that I told you to look for when trying to figure out what is the case? What's going to be the big hint as far as cases go? The ending. The ending. So what is our ending? Sigma. It is sigma. Now, is it just sigma? That's the other thing you have to determine. S. Okay. So, it's iota sigma. So, what is, what case has an ending of iota sigma? Dative. 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 So case number. Is it singular or plural is what number is. Is it plural? Plural. So we have dative plural. Now to know the gender, you have to know what the word is. Do you know what the word is? The lexical form? No. So this is parabole is the lexical form. So after you hear me say it, it's parabole, and by noticing that it's got an alpha, what gender do you think Par it is? It's parable. Yeah, it is parable. What's the uh, gender? Is it the feminine? Yep. And then what would your inflected meaning be? So you said it's dative, it's plural. So by being dative, what's our helping words? I don't know on that one. So that's the to, in, or with. So it's plural, so it's pair of bulls. So this is the term that's used to describe how Jesus spoke to people in parables. Um, I guess you could say with parables, that would be also acceptable. Two parables is kind of, unless it's the object of a preposition, there's not going to be too many times that comes up. Okay. Victoria, you want to do this one? Recorded, Mariah. <laughs> Harmer, Hamarti, um, which is genitive plural feminine from Hamartia, meaning of sins. Yep, not a whole lot else to say about that one. Um, Let's do uh, let's do one more. Um, anybody who wants to volunteer can do this one. I'll do it. Go ahead, Gregory. Um, so the word is oikloi or okloi. Yep. And it is nominative plural masculine from oklos, meaning mm -hmm. crowds or multitudes. Yep. That's exactly right. Okay. James found a coke. He's letting everybody know it. Water. You don't need that. Okay. All right. So, 
We'll do some more parsing as we do these. All right. Um, and to Alangelio. Anyone want to give that one a shot? Dad, why don't you do it? I'll I'll help you out. Uh, Angelio, the lexical form is that not uh is that not something to do with angels? <laughs> sort of. Um. So let's just start. Do you know what "and" means? That's "in." Okay. Toe. Toe is the. Okay. In the. So what does epsilon, upsilon, or U in English, the EU, what does that prefix mean? Like euthanasia or I don't know. To death. No, the EU part of it. The fan is the death part of it. So EU means good. Okay. Okay. And you pointed out that at least some derivative of angelos seems to be in this word in some way, right? Do you remember what the other meaning of angelos was? I, I should know this, but but I'm 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 uh, I'm under duress here. I can't come up with it. That's fine. The pink eye makes it hard to see. <laughs> um. <clears throat> so angelos can also mean messenger. So if I tell you that the EU means good and that some form of that derivative is something to do with messenger, what would you guess that word means? <coughs> not just good, the, not just message, but good message. The gospel? Yep. So that's in the gospel. This is the <clears throat> excuse me. This is the way I learned vocabularies by figuring out what the different roots mean. That's the reason I walk you through it. So in the gospel, <clears throat> uh, can you tell me what case Evangelio is in? The nominative. The uh, <clears throat> look at the iota subscript. What does that usually mean? And then let me put pointer. It's dative. So you know that from a couple things. One n takes the dative. So that's the first hint. But that iota subscripted under the omega is <clears throat> for the first really even until next fall if you see an iota subscript <clears throat> it's dative there's a few times where you can get an iota subscript in the uh <clears throat> excuse me in the different uh like parenthetical phrases and that sort of thing but in general it's going to be under the dative or under it's going to represent dative um let's see ezekiel you want to try this one <clears throat> okay
Do you want me to read it for you? You can tr go ahead if you want to. Meta to Iwano. Yep. So, remember, meta can have two meanings. Do you remember what those are? Well, isn't it, in the, like in the genitive, isn't it with? Mm hmm And the accusative, it is after. Yep. So, here we see Iowanu in what tense? Or, sorry, case. Genitive. Genitive. So, what is the meaning of meta? based on what you just told me. Is it after? So because the object of the preposition is a genitive, it uses the genitive meaning, which is what? With. With. Okay. So it's with, then to Iwanu is what? John. John. With John. Or Jonah. Usually John. All right. Okay, this one's kind of interesting. Gregory, why don't you do this one? Okay, um, should I read it first? Go ahead. Kai ain kyrios meta. Um, I don't know for sure the last word is. Oh wait, e o. No, I I can't pronounce the last word. You know, safe. That's E O Yeah. E O safe. Safe. E O yep. safe. Okay. Yeah. And Kai is and even or also. So yep. isn't an um he she or it was? That is correct. So Start out, what is the subject of the sentence? Um, curios. Okay. Curios means? Um, Lord. Okay. So we'll bring the Kai out at the beginning. So, and the Lord. What comes next? Um, what did you do then? And the was? Yep. Yep. And the Lord was – that's why I said this one's kind of interesting. Meta Eosef. Yeah, I'm not sure how you'd figure out um, what Eosef like, is, like what its case okay. is. So Eosef means what? Um, does that mean John? So it ends with a sound. Yosef. Does that help? So Yosef is Joseph. Oh, Joseph. Yep. So here's the thing. Yosef is not inflected. 
So how do we deal with the preposition when our object of the preposition isn't inflected? Any ideas, Gregory? I'm not for sure. Okay. Well, what did Ezekiel just tell us that the two possible definitions of meta were? Um, with genitive, with, accusative, after. Okay. So when you run into one of these, the way you do it is you just try them both out. So it's either the Lord was after Joseph, which is kind of funny, or the Lord was with Joseph. So either, I guess the Lord was chasing Joseph is the way it sounds to me, or the Lord was with Joseph. So which one makes the most sense? Just this one, you don't even necessarily need context. Yeah. Just with that like, sense. Uh, it seems like the Lord was with Joseph would make more sense. Yes. So that's the way that we know that's what it is. It's, whenever it seems ambiguous. So if you look at the, the way that just the grammar, the grammar is ambiguous. But once you put that into a sentence, it can only mean one thing. Okay. All right. Um, Victoria, you want to do this one? Patheos agape esten or esten. God is love. Okay. Um, what? Can you parse? I got pay for me. Um, um, nominative singular feminine. Okay. And what is its role in this sentence? Um, the predicate nominative. Okay. That's the big thing I want you guys to see is agape is in the nominative, but it's playing the role of the predicate nominative. And we know that by going back to our rules, that generally the one that has the article is going to be the subject. So hotheos is going to be our subject. All right. Um, go ahead, Gregory. Um, I have a question about the yeah. last one. Yep. About Estin. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not. I don't remember completely. For sure how you um know what that is okay so they wanted you to memorize the paradigm of amy and that's really what it comes down to oh so that's a part of the paradigm yep okay that's just what i wanted to know yep i don't have my book in front of me or i'll tell you what page that was on but it's in chapter eight i think it on the review part of chapter eight the paradigm's listed there too Okay. Erkatai Ace Oikon. Um, Dad, you want to try this one? I'm with you. Just have to help me. Okay. So we've got what Erkatai means, right? He, she, or it comes. Do you remember what ace means? Is that two? It's either two or towards. Yeah, I'm saying or into. Okay. Uh, do you know what oikon means? I should. Uh... Me a hint. Try to remind me of it. Um. So there's a a, a yogurt made by I think it's Dannon who makes it, which is Oikos, and it's named after this word. Not very helpful, but an interesting piece of trivia. <laughs> Um, let me see if I can find that word. Like, 
Paul uses a really interesting word play with the roots of this word, and I was trying to find it. Is that crowd or multitude? That's oklos. That's the one we had earlier. Oikon means house. Okay. So, Erikasai Ace Oikon means what? Comes, I would say, comes into the house. Yeah, and, and it's kind of ambiguous. If you if you don't know who it's referring to, it could be a he, a she, or an or it. But I think this is actually taken from Mark where Jesus uh, comes to, uh, I want to say to Peter's uh, mother-in-law. I think it's where this is from. Anyway, I, I, it's he in the context, but any of those would be equally valid. All right. Uh, let's see. Um... Okay. Um, Gregory, you want to try this one? Okay. So, exhalation. Oh, this one. Um, doxon, para, anthropone. Okay, so this one is, um, I guess, a little bit out of order from the way that English would be, so we're going to have to work a little backwards. So what is our subject of this sentence? Let's start there. I don't see one exactly. So would it be is a I and Lombano? Yes. So I becomes the unstated subject. Okay. So I. So um, since there's a ooh, would you like to translate like I do not receive? That that's how I would do it. I do not receive. Um, glory. Okay. Ara with um genitive from. Yep. So how would you? So say? I do not receive glory from men. Yes, I do not receive glory from men. So I don't know if we've had too many of these where, if you have the ooh, you have to somehow put that negative into your translation. So you're going to have to put either a not or a don't or um, sometimes you have to supply a do in addition to the not. So I do not receive is the way we did this one. Um, glory from men. Uh, can you parse dachshund for me? Um, would that be accusative? Singular feminine from doxa, yep, meaning glory. Yep, yep. All right. Okay, I, I like this one. Uh, Ezekiel, you gonna try this one? Lawlesson, ah, Jesus, and Parabolis, Tois, Aklois. Okay. So let's start off with what is the subject of our sentence? Jesus. Okay. And how would you translate that? Jesus. Yep. All right, and our verb is what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and 
and you can see here it means what? Sorry, I had trouble hearing you. You asking me what a lolly sun means? Yeah. He feared, spoke. Yeah, so Jesus spoke in parabolis tois aklois. Would it be like Jesus spoke parables to them? Okay, so keep the end there. So what's Jesus spoke in parables? Yep. Jesus spoke in parables to them. What is Akhois? Crowds. Crowds. So Jesus spoke in parables to the crowds. Um, can you parse uh, Akhois for me? Dative, plural, masculine. Lexical form, aklas, inflected meaning, crowds. Okay. All right. And this is another one where it could technically be with the crowds or to the crowds, but generally you don't speak with people. If you're giving a speech, in parables kind of implies a speech. But... Um, from a, a grammar point of view, it could be with crowds or to crowds. But based upon the context, you can be pretty confident it's to crowds or to the crowds. All right. So the importance of this would be perhaps uh, a conversation rather than conversation rather than a speech yeah so if you if you wanted to translate if if you saw so like I think it was last week we had a sentence that was something along the lines of Elelesen ha Iesus in parabolis tois mathetes or mathetes sorry um, so that was Jesus spoke in parables to the disciples or Possibly in that context, because the disciples would have been a smaller group than just the crowds, that one could possibly with the uh, disciples. Does that make sense? Yes, and that was exactly why I asked the question. So the grammar allows for both. The context, though, pretty well in this one, this one, you can be pretty confident, this is going to be two. In the one where you're talking about the disciples, that one you could make an argument. Uh, when you look at the greater context, it's almost always there's a uh, there's a couple of times like when Jesus is explaining parables in Mark where I could see it being with, but my in my mind, it's never going to be wrong to say two in this particular sense. There are certain situations where it may be incorrect to say with, so you're generally better off saying to because it's going to almost always be correct. Does that make sense, Dad? Yes, and that was kind of why I asked the question. Yep. No. Victoria, do this one. This was from my less than a couple of weeks ago. Curios esten ha huias tu antropu kai tu sabatu. Um, word is, wait a minute. Yeah, the, the son the, the, is Lord. Yeah. 
The Son is Lord. The Son of Man is yeah. Lord. Um, the Son of Man is Lord. Even of the Sabbath? I think you could do even of the Sabbath. The way I usually do this sentence is the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. But yes, Kai can mean Son even. Okay. Say how you would do it again. The Son of Man. The Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. So Okay, when, I see. You're putting I there. Have, right. So whenever you have a predicate nominative, it's generally always going to come right after um the s uh, the the being verb or after a conjunction related to it i think even might be a from a syntax point of view even might be a better representation of what this is trying to say but i don't think most readers would understand it that way if that makes sense but i think the the point of the verse is He's so great, he's also Lord of the Sabbath. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think to get, it's hard to get both of those meanings in there. Um, the way I did it, I think it's better English. The way you did it, it's better Greek and better representation of the actual material. But the general rule is you want to take your subject to the front. Okay, and then you're going to want to have next your being verb, which in this case is esteem. And the whenever you have a group of words, kind of a cluster together that's modifying your subject, you need to treat that as a whole unit. So ha we ask to anthropu is one unit. So that all comes to the front. Okay. Um, I think that's really the main stuff. Before you move on, uh, pronounce Sabbath again. Sabatu. Okay. I was looking for a, a, uh, a, a, a different spelling, that's all. So Sabaton is the, is that what you're looking for? Yeah, that's what, it, that's what I'm looking at, I, I guess. And uh, Sabaton is the uh, lexical. Victoria, is this the one where we found that the, was it the dative plural is irregular? Um, I think that, uh, oh. Okay. You'll probably never run across this because I think there's only two occurrences in the New Testament. But just an interesting aside, the dative plural of this is not sabbatize. What was it? Sabbatine? Is that right? Sabbacin or Sabbacin or something like that. Right. Yeah, so it, it follows the third declension rules. Yes, it was Sabbacin, which is the the third declension rules rather than the normal second declension rules. Probably never see it, just kind of an interesting thing. And it's probably because it's a uh, Semitic word, so it comes from Hebrew. All right. Um, let's do this together. All right. Kai Aginata in 
Echinice, Tais Hemeris, Hathen, Jesus, Apa, Nazareth, Tais Galileas, Kai, Ebaptistai, Ace Tone, E. A. E. or De Nain, Hupa, Iawanu. Okay, easy for me to say. All right, let's, uh, there's any volunteers, anybody who wants to, um, Kai Aginata, how do we want to render, render that? And she. So the, the part in the, the, the last part of it is the definition. So that would be, and she came to pass. Genemai means something about to become, something like that. So Agenita is the heiress of that. And generally it's translated as what you see there at the end. Any takers? Are you just asking for the first line? Yep. And it came to pass that. Okay, and it came to pass that. Anyone want to take the second line? Um, would it be in those days? Yep. Mm -hmm. So, and it came to pass in those days. Next line. Ezekiel, you want to give it a try? Not really. <laughs> How about Jesus went into Nazareth? So, a pa, do you remember my little way? I said to remember that. What is an apostate? Means to step out of. And what is, uh, well, when you, you become an apostate, you've gone which direction from salvation? Yeah, no. left. So Jesus left out of Nazareth? Uh, away from is usually the way that I, but something like that. Uh, left would probably work in this particular case. Um, and Jesus went away from Nazareth. Tase Galileas. Anybody remember what Galilea means? That'd be Galilee. Yeah. So because it's in the genitive, so it's of Galilee. So Jesus went out of or away from Nazareth of Galilee, and you can see there, he, she, or it, this is a he, was baptized. <laughs> that, what did I say, ace meant or could mean? Means from? No, ace. Sorry, no. I'm sorry, into. Into. Ace tone, you, I hate this word. E or, E or Danane. 
What's that? I'm gonna I'm gonna be guessing the region the region of what? So it's into the remember that usually a an iota takes the place of a J. So it's if you, say, if you say this iota is a J, so Eor or Jor. Jordan. Yeah. So, and it came to pass that in those days, Jesus went from or away from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan, Hupa Iwanu. Anybody? Um, is it Iwana? Be by John. By John. Yep. All right. Let's do this one more, okay? Hatheos agape esteem, kai ha minon. In te agape, in to theo mene, kai ha theos in auto mene. Gregory, I feel it's appropriate that you do the translation for this one. As our local Johannine expert. So, I'm, isn't the, the first part would be like, um, God, God love, like, I'm trying to think, because, okay, God's a subject. Esteem is is. Okay, esteem is is. Oh, God is love, would that be? Yep. Okay, then, and it translates it right there for you. Hominone is one remaining. Yeah, so it, would it be then uh, God is love and one remaining? Yep. In te agape. So that is like in, that'd be in, the, in love? Yep. And then you're going to see that Mene kind of comes next. So what would be? I'm giving you a hint. So the Mene part comes next. So that would be what? It would be like um, one remaining in love remains. Mm -hmm. um, in God. Yep. And the last part? Um, let me just look at it because I don't have it fully on my screen. Oh. I'm looking at the book that we have. Something like, and God, um, would it be something like, and God and him? So it says Mene again. You can you can say the state the word again. Oh, so, so uh, God remains in Him. Yep. So God is love, and one remaining in love remains in God, and God remains in Him. Um. This is an example of that phrasing thing I was talking about. Uh, last time we met, this is how you do it, is you take the actual sentence parts of it, and then you break apart the, the different sections that are kind of non-essential for the actual sentence. So the, 
you can see here he takes the chi's out of it. And the idea is you need to translate these three chunks and then you can add, kind of put them back together at the end with the ands. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in the recording here, I'm going to send out some more translations that I want us to do next week. Um, at this point, we have most of the, uh, the simple stuff that we need to know from this particular section done. Next week, we're going to do a few more translations. The following week, we're going to do third declension. I want us to have a really good handle on this before we start third declension. Because if you've got a good handle on this, third declension is pretty easy. Okay, that's the main thing I want to do. Um, and then whenever we do third declension, it's not going to be very hard. I will be in um, Woodbury to do third declension. And before we start, have that lecture, I will go over anything you guys need. Okay. Let me stop the recording.